to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex, and I am joined here for the next half hour with uh, Jakari Jackson is coming in. We're going to talk a little bit about the news. Uh, I've been on my soapbox here about uh, the police state and how America is turning into the Stasi. Actually, there was uh, on the Fourth of July weekend there was a uh, an artist, a light artist in Berlin that actually shown this giant uh, projected a giant sign on the side of the U.S. Embassy that said United Stasi of America <laughs> and had a picture of Kim dot com and uh, yeah. they know what the Stasi is about. And they see this happening, Jakari. I tell you what, they, they're really they worried about it. They charge him with something, correct? Uh, yeah, they're, they're trying to think of something to charge him with. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's not even graffiti. I mean, it's that's right. shining that uh, image. That's right. But uh, I, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, definition of character, you know? I maybe, mean, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> also, last night we had, uh, Jakari and I normally do the, the nightly news, and uh, we had the world premiere last night of State of Mind. Now, this is a, uh, you want to talk about how the government controls us. You know, there was an article today about uh, a guy, a real life Jason Bourne, mm -hmm. that was from Natural News where the guy has no memory and he's speaking Swedish. That's the kind of mind control we typically think of, you know, the kind of MK Ultra type of stuff, but this is actually, uh, covers that as well as covers the more the broader aspects of mind control. Propaganda. Yeah, the more subtle aspects of it. Education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the educational system. And what the goals have been from the very beginning. Now, we premiered this last night. We had the world premiere of State of Mind last night on the uh, InfoWars Nightly News for our subscribers to Prison Planet TV. But, uh, you know, you can still get a copy of it. And where we are, where we were back in uh, North Carolina, we didn't have the bandwidth to watch movies on the Internet. A lot of people don't like to, to stream an entire movie on the Internet. Not and if you, yeah. Yeah, if you get a, a DVD of this, that's a great way to pass the information along to other people. People are much more likely to watch this and enjoy it with a DVD. Also Everybody's got a DVD also player. Blu-ray. That's right. Blu-ray, even. So, Jakari, what's up? Well, I, I saw this, and you, you brought this up when I first walked in. Uh, the McDonald's budget. Yeah. <laughs> now, maybe we can get a doc cam on this. Uh, this is the McDonald's budget, as you would assume by the title. It's trying to teach people who make the McDonald's type of income uh, how to budget their money. And this article points out that, you know, can, it would ask the question, can you support a family on $2,000 a month? Mm -hmm. Now, supporting myself on $2,000 a month is, you know, difficult enough. You know, yeah, to pay, the entire you know, family. Bet between uh, rent and, you know, various utilities, over $700 a month, then food, gas, you know, just uh, the bare necessities, phone and so forth. And it, it says McDonald's teamed up with Visa to, you know, to teach their employees, you know, how to properly budget their minimal, minimum wage. But the big thing in it, it says uh, blatantly in the document itself that they expect you to work two jobs. Yeah, exactly. Because they're not going to they're not going to hire you full time because then they got to pay Obamacare. Obamacare. Yeah, right. So they're going to make you know to to get even like a twenty thousand dollar income, they're mm -hmm. going to make you work two jobs. Exactly. <laughs> so you're going to work you know maybe two thirty hour jobs, I guess. I don't know. Sixty uh, sixty hours. But, but they don't they don't budget anything for food or for gas. Right. I, I guess it's like, uh, do you want fries with that budget? You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, you know, it's just more of this trying to get people to live on less. Meanwhile, you know, yeah. Obama is going to Africa saying that Africans shouldn't have air conditioning. I'm not making that up. We we played that clip oh, yeah. here before. Saying, well, uh, Prince Charles has said the same thing. You yeah, know, you can't they fly in with their jets and say, yeah. you know, you shouldn't drive cars. Yeah, he, well, he hops <laughs> off jets everywhere. Obama jumps off Air Force One and tells people they shouldn't have cars in Africa because that would raise the standard of living too high. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Meanwhile, he's renting out, you know, private golf courses to play with Tiger Woods and so forth. It's going to melt down the, uh, <laughs> the yeah. entire planet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. They, they put... The employees at McDonald's on this ridiculous budget that doesn't even allocate any money for food mm -hmm. or for gas to get to your two jobs that you're going to have to have. Right. Okay. But meanwhile, our government has supposedly this debt limit of uh, 16 trillion, just under 16 trillion dollars. Frozen. That's been frozen for the last 56 days. They're claiming, incredibly claiming, that they have not spent any money for the last 56 straight days. So evidently, nobody in the federal government is getting paid anything. They're not buying anything. And uh, they, they stopped at about 26, what does it say here? $26 million short of the limit. And it's been frozen there since uh, May 17th, you know? Yeah, just like you said, nobody's <laughs> gotten a paycheck. You know, they haven't had another $7 million vacation or, you know, whatever else they 
their expenses may incur. Yeah, I guess they put uh, Obama's trips on a credit card or something. But you Maybe remember, Visa. Uh, you know, Obama <laughs> keeps threatening, and I believe it was last year, the year before, he threatened not to pay the military. You know, of all people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, people who uh, go overseas and have to send money back to their families, we're not going to pay them, or he threatened not to pay them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, we've got an interesting article. You know, we're talking about how the government scares everybody into all of these different uh, uh, programs. You know, we've got to spy on you. We've got to mm -hmm. go through your cars. Uh, there's an article on the Drudge Report today that TSA is now going through parked cars at, at airports, airport, right? Yeah. You've got to be so afraid of Al-Qaeda. And uh, we've got a clip here that uh, uh, has Fox News talking about Al-Qaeda hijacking your car. Can we play that, guys? Can we play a little bit of that? Go ahead. Imagine this scenario, you're driving along and suddenly you're no longer controlling the car. That's a scary scenario from some top security analysts who warn that as our cars become more sophisticated, they also become more vulnerable to hackers and even terrorists. Is that true? Morgan Wright is a cyberterrorism analyst right. and is yeah, joining us now. True. And again, one of our, our favorite stories, but one that really concerned us, Morgan. Is this true? I mean, is this something that we need to be concerned about? Well, look, so the fact and fiction. In fact, yes, you can take control of a car. OnStar is an example, and they work with law enforcement. The oh, stolen vehicle is this. Just last week they can Hastings. actually locate yeah, right. your car. Law enforcement gets in behind it. They send a signal to the car to start slowing it down, and then it cruises off to the side of the road. But in that scenario, law enforcement's in control. They block the road. This is a My good concern thing. is what good happens when the they not it, only yeah. just maybe hack the car, they hack the systems that control these cars or have access to them and then do these things. So a lot of people say that's far-fetched, but you know, one of my examples on September 10th, 2001, we thought it was far-fetched to fly four airplanes into a building. Never thought okay, it could happen. It right so there. never say never. Yeah, they thought it was far-fetched to fly four airplanes into buildings. Mm -hmm. and actually, they got two airplanes flew into the Twin Towers and three giant skyscrapers fell straight down. Exactly. I can control I mean, demolition. And, and, and so, I mean, yeah, I, I think it is incredible because they don't even know how many planes flew into, because, uh, you know, obviously you would think that they would take a, a plane to make a building fall down or more than that. Yeah. Uh, because they, they designed them to be with, to withstand a direct Which plane is, hit. You know, since we're, uh, let's briefly talk about the topic. Uh, building 7, 9-11, uh, had very little exterior damage, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit of debris. Some minor fires. Mm -hmm. And knocked and supposedly knocked the building down. But you think about buildings four and five that had much more damage and had to be torn down to the ground. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I'll yeah, gonna, that's incredible. But it, yeah, he talks about how it's just so incredible. But the other thing I want to talk about here is notice how they craft the, the discussion here. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's hackers and it's Al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. who could hack into your car. But when the government does it, yeah. it's for your own safety. When Officer Brown pulls you over on when, that when the reality is, stretch of highway, exactly. it's, all, it's all good. Yeah, only the government is going to be doing this. You know, when this thing came out with Hastings, right? Mm -hmm. Immediately, Alex said, you know, they can, they can crash a car. Mm -hmm. uh, by hacking into the system. And, oh, no, you can't you, do that. Oh, That's far-fetched. I want people to see this. Can you guys just go to Google? You don't have to play the audio. But just go type in Google car, and it's some trendy guy with a hat on. He's driving <laughs> to... Uh, See exactly. Bell. Exactly. And, uh, you know, but, but after that came out, after Alex said it, people were laughing at him. Mm -hmm. But then when Richard Clark, who is the former U.S. National Coordinator for Security, Infrastructure Protection, and Counterterrorism, Richard Clark, mm -hmm. tells the Huffington Post, there's reason to believe that intelligence agencies for major powers know how to remotely seize control of a car. And he says, so if there were a t cyber attack on Hastings' car, and I'm not saying there was, mm -hmm. I think whoever did it would probably get away with it. And then later on in that article, they even say, then just a couple of paragraphs down, they say uh, Hastings was driving this uh, Mercedes when he crashed into a tree. Uh, <laughs> I mean, first of all, if you remember, the only eyewitness, knew, uh, eyewitness that everybody was talking about the first day was Luis Cortez. Mm -hmm. And what he said was it was driving very fast. It jackknifed. Parts went everywhere. Okay. He didn't say that it hit the tree right. and caught fire that way. Okay. And if you look at the way the car... If you look at how the car is, okay, and where the engine is, mm -hmm. all right, there's absolutely no way that those two are going to get separated with that kind of crash. If it hit head-on into the tree, it's going to capture the engine and drive it into the car. Exactly. If it hit sideways with enough impact to somehow, I mean, anything I guess could be possible, but if, if it was going to eject it sideways at a right angle to the direction the car was going, that car would have been wrapped around the tree. That didn't happen either. But I've looked at crash after crash after crash on the Internet. And the simple fact of the matter is if you've got something like a Pinto 
Remember the Ford Pinto? Maybe you don't remember that. I do. I'm old <laughs> enough to remember it. Okay, it was a big deal because it fuel tank was compromised in rear-end collisions. And you can see uh, highway traffic cameras of it being hit from the back and the entire contents of the of the gas can are atomized and sprayed everywhere mm -hmm. and then catch fire. And you see that in these car crashes. You see car crash after car crash, very, very bad. They don't blow up instantly like they do on a Hollywood movie. Exactly. Yeah. That only happens when you have the rear end is hit. And of course, the rear end of the Mercedes that Michael Hastings was driving was completely intact. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that's going to blow up and explode on impact. Uh, there's it's less than a 2% chance that somebody's going to die in an automobile fire because that is so rare that that happens. Right. Because typically it starts to catch fire and it gradually builds. Yeah, you know? Even if you watch uh, NASCAR races, those guys usually have time to bail out before the car yeah, goes yeah. up in flames, if it does go up in flames. A very good example, there's a video, people can see it on YouTube. It was a um, like a Formula One race and this one car loses control. At, uh, maybe it's like a greasy spot on the track or something. Goes spinning out of control, crashes, parts go flying everywhere, but doesn't catch, in, catch on fire. Mm -hmm. Short while later, another car hits the same spot, same thing, starts spinning out, and hits this car in the back instantly. A giant fireball, okay, because he hit it in the back and mm -hmm. exploded the gas tank. Now, of course, that guy actually walked out of that giant fireball because he had a uh, fireproof suit, had a helmet, that sort of thing, which a, a person typically would not have. But the point being is that the government can hack into these systems. Mercedes has been maniacal about trying to make their cars safer. They developed anti-lock braking systems. They developed these stability counter-steering systems. And they have all kinds of systems that can accelerate and slow down your car now based on uh, if, it, if it sees that you're going to be hitting somebody head on. And even right. takes a look at uh, people behind you to see how quickly to put the brakes on. So they have all kinds of controls mm -hmm. on these cars, which make them safer, but also makes them hackable. We've had a video that we played on the show of a DARPA official talking about how severe the, the a problem that is for the government. They're worried about it. Oh, yeah, because um, all it is is, you know, hacking. They hack drones. You know, uh, the, I believe it was the University of Texas hacked one right here. And uh, so people think that it's, uh, it's impossible. It's something that can happen. You know, if you have an older car, you may not have to worry about such things. But That's people right. who drive the newer models, you know, it's, it is possible. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you look at this situation with the Hastings car, now, you know, I, I believe it was a bomb that went up, would cause the pieces to fly everywhere because there was, there was one eyewitness that was interviewed by the Young Turks, and he was, I didn't find him to be very credible because it seemed like he was trying to reinforce the official story, you know, and, and he says, oh, yeah, it hit this bump, and, uh, you know, I think that's what caused the engine to come out. It's like, I'm sorry, but, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to say about cars, especially Mercedes, they're not going to have the engine fall out when it hits a bump, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, these are cars that they designed to drive on the Autobahn with no speed limit, and they do it all the time. Right. And, uh, you know, a, a high-speed, uh, you know, dip in the, in the, in the uh, pavement is not going to cause the engine to come out. Yeah, and, right. and exactly, to go a different direction. So, uh, you know, it's just not credible, but it would give them cover, a cover story, as everybody has picked up, as the mainstream media has picked up, to have him driving at a high speed mm -hmm. under hacking control and then blow the car up. I mean, that, that would perfectly fit. Yeah, and that's what they want. They don't want anybody to question the story. We've given you the story. We came out, we said there's no foul play. We don't want to release the, uh, the police documents and so forth. Just let it go. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what they want us to do with the, uh, the associates of the uh, Zokar brothers, not saying they're innocent or guilty. But, you know, it's, it's this uh, repetitive thing that, you know, they just give you more information all the time, all the time, all the time. So you forget about this. I'm still waiting to see the surveillance footage from Sandy Hook, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They never show that. Now, you mentioned the Zokar trial. And one of the things I think is interesting, pull up that uh, photo, guys, uh, from the Rolling Stone magazine cover. Yes, yeah, this Facebook photo that makes him look like a rock star in some people's opinion. Right. Well, they're very upset about it. But what you know what upsets me about it is the fact that it says there as a caption, bomber. The bomber. The bomber. You know, he's the bomber. Right. You know, he's been tried and convicted in the media in the same way that Zimmerman has. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have completely lost the whole concept of how a jury works and why you would have a jury. I mean, looking at this is a, an article that's linked on uh, Drudge right now. Uh, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King would not wear a hoodie. Uh, and she did that in reaction to a, a picture that somebody had uh, photoshopped his face into a picture of a hoodie. 
and uh, she's talking about the uh, the trial there. You know, one of the things that that bothers me about this whole thing is that people don't understand why we have juries. Mm -hmm. you know, just remember with the uh, with the Boston bombers, the alleged Boston <laughs> bombers. You know, just the days after after they captured the younger brothers, like we don't need. We don't need to inform these guys of their rights. We don't right. need trials. We don't need this. We don't need that. We just need to convict these guys, execute these guys, throw them in the, in the cellar for the rest of their lives. That's right. And, and it used to be that if the media was so irresponsible, you know, we have free speech mm -hmm. and we should have free speech. But that doesn't mean that you slander and demonize and libel people. Right. right. And so, you know, when they when they call somebody, when they talk about people before they've had a trial, they used to always say the alleged bomber the alleged mm -hmm. murderer the alleged whatever they don't do that anymore no okay they don't bother with it and nobody is talking about that everybody is talking about how zokar right. the bomber looks too good on yeah. this picture yeah, and cvs says they're not even going the cvs drugstore chain's not even going to carry the magazine in their not stores because of the the content but because of the image on the cover exactly that's what that's what people <laughs> take offense to i find that amazing i'm going to be talking in the third hour to uh, someone from the fully informed jury association and it's something that most people don't even go for a jury trial anymore. Most of the time, they're intimidated mm -hmm. by a lot of spurious charges that are piled on by prosecutors. And then they plea bargain to maybe what they would have been charged with in the first, in the place. first place. Yeah, they, <laughs> so. they overcharge, you yeah. know, which, um, you know, I, I wish more people would understand this. You know, I, well, I, don't, I don't know any particular examples off the top of my head. But, you know, there are examples where, you know, you charge somebody with, uh, let's say, murder, you mm -hmm. know, to get them to... Uh, you know, go to go for manslaughter, and and it's very very few trials ever go to a jury anymore. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is because jurors don't know what their rights are, and they usually turn into rubber stamps for mm -hmm. the uh, judge. But not in the case of the Zimmerman uh, trial. You know that that was kind of interesting, and and I don't know what your take is on it. I mean, we haven't really talked about. It. Everybody's been talking about this, but we haven't really talked about. It. To me, it's it's like one of these things about. Uh, a self-defense thing that really a jury had to decide. You really right. couldn't decide that in the media. Yeah, we talk more about that on the other side. Yeah, yeah. We'll be right back. I'm joined with Jakari Jackson, and um, I'm David Knight. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm joined here in the studio with Jakari Jackson. We typically work the nightly news for Prison Planet TV, and we're substituting here for uh, Alex Jones today. Now, before we get back to the news, I just want to uh, tell you about one of our sponsors, Infidel Body Armor. That's uh, www.infidelbodyarmor.com. It stops hundreds of rounds from AK-47, M4, 3060, 308, and more. Ceramic armor may stop six rounds, but what about the seventh, as they say? This is a great product, and when you support our advertisers, it helps to fund our operation here. So please go to infidelbodyarmor.com. Well, Jakari, talking about body armor, there's a bounty out on uh, Zimmerman's head from the new Black, Black Panthers. Panthers. I always have to put that new in there to distinguish it. Larry Pinckney always <laughs> wants to uh, dis uh, disassociate himself from the new <laughs> yes. Black Panthers with good reason. Uh, so uh, Zimmerman might want to get some of that um, infidel, infidel body armor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a. Uh, it's amazing to see the double standard here when uh, they're allowed to publicly put out a ten thousand dollar bounty mm -hmm. on his head, and yet at the same time we've got an AP news story here that police are charging a website that hosted a murder video. Yeah, and, <laughs> and keep in mind, it? you know, they don't want him dead or alive. We've seen the T-shirts that say yeah. "dead or alive" and it has mm -hmm. "alive" scratched out. 
And and you've got Facebook pages that call for his murder. They don't say anything and to them. Celebrities uh, yeah. tweeting his parents' home home address. And I don't even think they were tweeting the correct addresses on those. And and you and I remember the time you know we, we've been visited. Just people make a you know a, a comment about murdering the Bush family or something like that on on um, Planet Info Wars. Planet Info Wars, and they show up at our door. Secret Service. We were both yes, here when uh, they showed up. People don't <laughs> believe us when we uh, tell them that story, but we actually had the Secret Service come up. It was. It's around Christmas time this mm -hmm. past year, and I was just about to leave to get on the plane to go back to Oklahoma. And the Secret Service comes, knocks on the door, and I believe you yeah. answered the door. <laughs> and, yeah, and he flashes me the badge, the badge that says Secret Service. Can I come in? I said no. Yeah. <laughs> you got some papers to come in. Yeah. So yeah, we went around and talked around with people, but you know they they don't hesitate to come to the door mm -hmm. about. A little spurious comment on our website, but somebody takes out an entire Facebook page. Right. They start doing T-shirts. They start putting out dollar bounties to have mm -hmm. him uh, killed. They have and absolutely no problem, no with, problem that. with that. Problem with that tells you right there what this whole thing is about. That tells you right yeah, there this is, a, that, this is a this is counter counterintelligence operation. Are protected. Yeah. yeah. This is a government operation to pit the races against each other. Nothing could be clearer to, uh, about, about that. I mean, and you look at the Black Panthers and how the Department of Justice just passed on doing anything about them turning voters away, threatening voters at polling mm -hmm. places in Chicago. We know that the government has used uh, counterintelligence to create groups like the Ku Klux Klan mm -hmm. and groups like the New Black Panthers, and this is absolute proof of it. No other group, unless they were a government, COINTEL Pro operation would be allowed to do something like this. And also the... I don't know if you want so much to call them an organized group, but all these riots and uh, I'll call them rioters because they're not protesters. You don't protest by jumping on innocent people's cars in the middle mm -hmm. of uh, of L.A. and tearing down gates of Walmart. That doesn't seem like a protest to me. But these people are going out, and regardless if they were really actively pursuing justice for Trayvon, you have plenty of people who are just opportunists using it as an excuse to go tear up stuff and go loot people's homes and so forth. Right. Even if they believe that the jury made the wrong uh, decision, how do you justify pulling out an innocent person who hasn't done anything to anybody. I mean, don't yeah. they see the irony of this? Yeah. They think that Trayvon was singled out for having done nothing at all, mm -hmm. and singled out because he was a, a, a particular race or appearance or whatever. Mm -hmm. He was singled out and killed. Well, So then they are going to go out and single out So they people. drive around <laughs> and abduct joggers, beat them up, and drop them off someplace. You know? That's right. And that's justice for Trayvon. That's right. Well, that's it for this segment. We're going to be back in the next hour with Stan Lenick. He's the Deputy Sheriff of the Year from the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police Officers Association. And we're going to talk to him about real law enforcement, constitutional law enforcement. So stay tuned. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.